Hello, my name is Jesse Johnson. I'm the head of conservation for the Smithsonian's Museum Conservation Institute, a research unit of the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, DC. This video is part of our series on the fundamentals of heritage conservation supported by the Getty Foundation. There are links to additional videos in this series available in English, Arabic, and Kurdish listed below. I'm an objects conservator, which means I have expertise in the care and conservation of three-dimensional objects of all kinds, and I've spent much of my career working on archaeological collections, mostly in the Middle East. I've been working with the Iraqi Institute for the Conservation of Antiquities and Heritage since 2009 to teach Iraqis how to care for and manage cultural heritage. I'm here to give you a brief background on caring for museum collections. I will focus on a preventive conservation approach. I will share with you a framework for considering how objects are damaged, deteriorate, or lost over time, and then think about how we can help to slow down the processes so that museums can preserve the objects for future generations. We use the phrase agents of deterioration to define the primary threats to cultural heritage. I'll also talk about an international standard approach to documentation. And finally, I'll talk about how basic regular tasks like housekeeping and building maintenance are important ways to stop the agents of deterioration. Collection care must be a shared responsibility with the entire museum staff thinking about preventive conservation as each person does their work. Instead of fixing damage that's already occurred, the international museum community now takes an approach we call preventive conservation or preventive care to stop or at least slow down deterioration and damage. Conservation treatment may still be needed if damage occurs. However, the object will never be the same. Better to spend our limited time and funding on stopping the damage from happening at all. Preventive conservation is all the actions and measures used to minimize damage and loss. Preventive conservation is used at different levels in the museum. For example, improving the security systems, setting up a regular cleaning routine for exhibits, or carefully choosing stable materials to protect objects in storage. The Canadian Conservation Institute developed a framework for preservation now used by many in the international cultural heritage community to examine the different influences that damage collections and consider ways to minimize damage, which can often be irreversible. In the framework, the influences that cause damage are the 10 agents of deterioration. The ways to minimize damage are to detect, block, report, and treat these agents of deterioration. And I will give you a couple of examples for each agent of deterioration. So let's go through the 10 agents of deterioration. Number one, physical forces are things like abrasion, direct impact, and vibration. Breakage is an example of damage caused by a physical force if an object is dropped. It could also be more subtle damage like scratches caused by poor packing or storage conditions. Number two, fire is an obvious agent of deterioration. Fire can burn both your collection and the museum building. Even if a fire doesn't destroy everything, water and chemicals used to douse a fire are other agents that will affect your collection. A fire also leaves damaging soot on the surface of objects that will have to be removed. Number three, pests like insects and mice are creatures who cause damage both directly by feeding on museum objects or indirectly through their waste. Birds nest on the outside of your museum will also attract pests that can then come inside and damage collections. Number four, light. Light causes damage such as fading, yellowing, and making things more brittle, particularly organic objects like manuscripts and textiles. Since we only need visible light to see, we can do a lot to protect objects by blocking out as much light as possible with shades on windows, storage and closed cabinets, and by turning out the lights when they're not needed. Number five, incorrect relative humidity as an agent of deterioration varies depending on the type of collection. For some collections, such as archaeological metals, the ideal relative humidity is 0%. For collections like manuscripts, it's more important that relative humidity is kept at a higher but stable level. Number six, thieves and vandals are unfortunately familiar to museums in Iraq. In times of peace, working with guards and security forces to familiarize them with your museum 
and its collections and sharing with them the importance of cultural heritage gives you more support to protect your museum. Controlling access into storage areas and locking cabinets are simple ways of adding day-to-day -day protection. Number seven, water damage occurs regularly in museums. Water might come from a broken pipe or from water flooding in from a rainstorm. One thing you can do to protect collections is store objects on shelves or pallets so that they're above the floor and protected from at least a few inches of water. Number eight, pollutants can come from a variety of sources, both inside and outside the museum. Chemical pollution from oil refineries and cars is one type of problem, but pollutants can also come from poor choices in packing and storage material. Even dust, very common in Iraq, is a pollutant. Number nine, incorrect temperature, like incorrect relative humidity, affects different types of objects in different ways. Temperature can be too high, and this can often happen in Iraq. Temperature can be too low, or fluctuating temperature can cause problems. When considering where to store or exhibit objects, consider using inside rooms with no windows as these spaces tend to be the most temperature stable parts of a building. Number 10, dissociation means that objects are lost either through being misplaced in the museum or because the information about the object is lost so that the object loses its importance for research and exhibit. For example, if computer catalog records are not backed up, Lots of information and work can be lost if the computer breaks. If storage is not organized and locations of objects are not recorded, it can be hard to know whether something is missing or has been stolen. So that's a brief discussion of the 10 agents of deterioration. What else can you consider if you want to carry out good preventive conservation in your museum? Good written and photographic documentation protects you from dissociation and can help you detect many other agents of deterioration by recording an object at a point in time. Documentation can then be reviewed to look for changes over time. If thieves attack, documentation can also be shared with law enforcement to help them recover objects from your museum. Object ID, promoted by the International Council of Museums, or ICOM, is an international standard for documenting objects that has defined the basic information that should be recorded for every object in a museum. Though Object ID was designed to aid in recovery of objects stolen from museums, it also ensures good practice for your everyday work. Links to more information on Object ID are below. The Object ID standard defines nine categories of information that should be recorded, as well as four steps to fulfill the procedure. The nine categories are type of object, materials and techniques, measurements, inscriptions and markings, distinguishing features, title, subject, date or period, and maker, if known. Object ID defines four steps that completely fulfill the documentation procedures. Number one, taking photographs of the object. Number two, recording information in the nine categories. Number three, writing a short description that includes additional information not covered in the nine categories. And number four, keeping the collected documentation in a secure place, ideally more than one place and more than one format. Consider keeping copies in secure offsite storage. Good housekeeping and maintenance blocks agents of deterioration such as pollutants and pests, but it also means you're regularly monitoring your collections and will detect problems at an early stage. Housekeeping requires looking as much as doing. You should set up a regular housekeeping and maintenance routine. While cleaning, look for problems such as water leakage or insects. Regularly inspect each object on display to decide if it needs careful dusting or shows any signs of deterioration. Walk around your building and look for gaps where insects and pollutants can get in. Document problems that you find during housekeeping with photographs and reports so that a record is kept over time. Everyone who works at the museum should be invited to consider what they can do to support collections care. Today, I define for you the 10 primary threats to collections, the agents of deterioration. Protecting collections works best if everyone at the museum thinks about how to detect and block problems that they find and reports damage when it happens. If damage occurs, consider how to change your museum's practices and policies so it doesn't happen again. There are links to more information on the topics I covered in this video. 
I hope the information I shared today has given you some new ideas about how to better care for your collections. Talk to others who've had training in collections care, share ideas, and work on building teams that can support each other to take care of Iraq's incredible cultural heritage. <laughs>